Hello, my name is Ashley Lowry. I'm an Indiana State University nursing student, and the title of my presentation is Emergency Preparedness and Providing Safe Nursing Care. So who is at risk? The population at risk are individuals of a community who are threatened or affected by an emergency. Here are the following learning objectives for the presentation. At the conclusion of this activity, participants will be able to define emergency preparedness. At the conclusion of this activity, participants will be able to identify the phases of the disaster cycle. At the conclusion of this activity, participants will be able to recite why emergency preparedness is important. At the conclusion of this activity, participants will be able to evaluate how the role of emergency preparedness plays a vital role in providing safe nursing care. I've included a pretest to check your knowledge on the topic. Don't worry, everything will be covered in the presentation and answers will be provided at the end. So what is emergency preparedness? It is the comprehensive knowledge, skills, abilities, and actions that are required in order to prepare for and respond to threatened, actual, or suspected incidents. These incidents include chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear, explosive, man-made incidents, natural disasters, or other related events. There are four phases of the disaster cycle. Mitigation is minimizing vulnerability of a community. Preparedness is understanding the potential impact and building response and recovery capacity. Response is addressing immediate threats, including saving the lives of others, meeting humanitarian needs such as food and water, cleanup and assessment of damage, and recovery, which is returning the community to normal. So why is it important to be prepared? Preparation plays a vital role in the incident of an emergency. It also provides the community with the capability to protect, prepare, respond, and recover. Healthcare professionals can provide vital insights and best practice knowledge that inform product development and help shape the future of disaster precaution. It provides increased patient safety and satisfaction and also better outcomes within the community. Here are five tips to ensure better life safety and emergency preparedness. Step one is to conduct a comprehensive risk assessment. This weighs the probability of danger and determines if the facility can respond appropriately. Step two, digitize your policies and procedures. This provides easier access during an emergency and keeps everyone informed. Step three, create an effective communication plan. There needs to be an organized process for whom to contact during an event. Step four, utilize online training to bolster readiness. This should be consistent and standardized. There is a healthcare disaster certification that I'll mention in a later slide. Step five, monitor and document equipment maintenance. This includes emergency generators, defibrillators, any equipment that could be used in a disaster. It helps ensure equipment is in working order to better protect individuals. The American Nurses Credentialing Center offers a competency-based exam that provides an effective and consistent assessment of the knowledge, skills, and competencies of healthcare professionals that are relevant to preparing for disasters, mitigation, response, and recovery. The goal of the certification is to promote positive outcomes for the public, disaster responders, and healthcare professionals involved in a disaster. The exam is three and a half hours long and there are 175 questions. The certification is valid for five years and it is renewable. Here are some measures to provide safe nursing care during an emergency or disaster. There should be a safe and suitable environment to provide high quality care. Areas organized and equipped explicitly for severe injuries or illness. Areas organized and equipped to provide lower levels of care as well. There should be sufficient amounts of supplies and materials available. An ample amount of healthcare professionals and first responders. 
safe transportation to an area that is out of harm's way, consistency while following protocols is key, and remember that patient privacy must still be maintained and the HIPAA privacy rule is not suspended during an emergency. However, certain provisions, sanctions, and penalties may be waived. It is natural to worry about your family and your home during an emergency or disaster. You may be occupied or overwhelmed, so it is important and smart to create a plan with your family or household members in just three easy steps. Step one is to discuss how to prepare and respond to emergencies that are most likely to occur in your area. Step two is to identify the roles and responsibilities for each member of the household and how you will all work together as a team in the event of emergency. And step three, you should practice your plan. The American Red Cross offers family disaster plan templates. You can fill these out online and email them to family, friends, or neighbors. You can also print it out and store it in an easy to access area within your home. The American Red Cross also has a variety of free emergency apps for smartphones and devices for individuals, hospitals, and healthcare professionals. Here are the answers to the pretest. Let's see how you did. Question one, which of the following are emergencies that require preparedness? The answers are C and D. Your dog that ate your homework and not being able to find the babysitter are not examples of emergencies that require preparedness. Question two, what are the phases of the disaster cycle? The answer is E, all of the above, mitigation, preparedness, response, and recovery. Question three, preparation plays a vital role in the incident of an emergency. The answer is A, true. Question four, there are blank steps to help promote better life safety and emergency preparedness. The answer is C. Five. Question five. The goal of the National Healthcare Disaster Certification is to promote positive outcomes for the public, disaster responders, and healthcare professionals involved in a disaster. Answers A. True. Question six. The National Healthcare Disaster Certification exam is valid for blank years and is renewable. The answer is B. Five. Question seven. A safe and suitable environment is essential in providing safe nursing care. The answer is A, true. Question eight. It is important to be consistent when following protocols in order to provide safe nursing care. The answer is A, true. Question nine. Creating a plan for your home is a good idea. The answer is A, true. Question 10. The American Red Cross does not have any good resources available to the public. The answer is B, false. The American Red Cross has plenty of resources that are available to the public. Here are some additional resources for emergency preparedness.